And welcome into Gator Bites on the 1010XL.com podcast network, also being simulcast on the Florida Gator 1010XL Facebook page. Today's Gator Podcast is brought to you by Southeast Orthopedic Specialists, the Northeast Florida's leading orthopedic center, providing an unparalleled level of care across numerous locations in both Jacksonville and St. Augustine. That includes Riverside, Northside, the South Side, the Beaches, Fleming Island, and St. John's. Well, look at here. After about two and a half months, it Denny Thompson. It has hold on. I, I think it's probably been at least two months. Yeah, since the guy. It's been two months since the Gator Bowl game. Yeah, you're right. Once, yeah. once we started draft prep, I shut it down. Well, I think right. we did. Uh, Graham Marsh and I did a couple, but we are glad to have you back because there is a ton to get into with Denny Thompson, the hacker Ryan Green. I guess you're getting an hour break from uh, draft prep with Anthony Richardson. For people that don't know, uh, Denny, you are working with Anthony basically every day getting ready and uh the combine next week how are things going so far uh better than planned man it's been uh in some ways it's like the longest time of your life but in other ways is you know when you when you're at this point and now we're started we're really locked in bubbled in because um we leave tuesday yeah right so it's uh now you you kind of start to look back and you're like dang that flew by mm-hmm but he's phenomenal, man. He has come in. He's be, he is completely obsessed with not the combine, but with getting better. And and this is this is an important time of year uh, or important part of your career because it's really the only time that you have three months dedicated to every single day of mechanics. And let's you know we're really setting the groundwork for what's going to happen over the next ten years for him. And so we take it very seriously and everything is planned out, thought out, everything's scheduled out. And then, uh, and then, you know, now we get to have some fun at the combine. He's, he's, listen, I think it's, I think he throws, runs everything that Saturday night. I, I would be by the TV if I were y'all. Like, I, 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 he's got a chance and I'm not saying he's going to, but he's got a chance to do things that are really unbelievable. Now, look, I mean, not, not to get too in depth, but I'm not breaking any news here. He's going to have a lot of interviews with a lot of teams in the top 10 of the draft. I mean, let's be, let's be honest. Do you guys have an itinerary? You arrive in Indy next Tuesday night. Do interviews start Wednesday? I mean, he's not on the field until Saturday, but take us through it as much as you can. What happens, say, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, before the on-the-field work? Yeah, I mean, a ton of interviews and a ton of medical stuff, mm-hmm. right? I mean, the, the medical stuff, I think, is the part that's the most exhausting because – and that's have the you stuff ever, you never see on TV. Right. right. Have you ever had an MRI? Uh, yes, I have. Like, have you ever had a full body MRI where you're literally in that thing? No, or, I would think it was like the lower body leg issue. Right. So you know how annoying even yeah. that is, right? Imagine full body MRIs one after another, mm-hmm. right? And the toll that kind of takes on you. Every team does a separate one. Not every team. Um, it's not like he's going to go in there and do 32 of them, right? But And I don't even know how many he's going to do. It, it, it's But we just know, because from Brock last year and Ian the year before, Brock Purdy, Ian Book, guys right. you've worked with in the past. Like, it, it's draining. It is, you know, it's 12 to 14 hours, and then you go off of that, and you've got a ton of media obligations with, you know, info network and all that kind of stuff that, that you really ha- kind of have to do. And and we've done a – I feel like we've done a very good job of nobody's really heard from anybody in our camp for two months. Right. Because we've really zoned in and focused. And so it's – now it's, all right, Ant, you know, all the stuff we've been working on – um, you're gonna crush everything, you know. Every uh, some of the stuff I really am not at liberty to say, or I would, has proven that he has an elite mindset. Everything, right? And so now it, it's, are can you go in there and show you're the face of a team? And if, if you can, literally every other question is answered, every one of them. Um, so that's the exciting part. CBS Sports did a mock draft earlier this week that had Anthony going number one in the draft. Actually, Indianapolis trading up to to take him. And that sparked a really interesting debate in the college football world and in the NFL draft world with media scouts on, on both fronts. Look, no one is denying the fact that Anthony Richardson is an incredible, incredible talent. But there is an obvious disconnect, and I don't know how much – we necessarily want to get in this, but I would not be doing my job if I didn't ask you who's coaching Anthony Richardson. You talk to college football guys, I guess, if you will, the college football world. There's an opinion on Anthony that good player, maybe a little raw still, maybe more developmental. You talk to good folks to cover the NFL draft. 
they're drooling over the guy. Why is there a pretty wide gap, quite frankly, between those opinions? Uh, I don't know. I don't know the exact reason. I, I, I'll tell you my thought on this is, and I, I don't, I don't know like the opinions. I haven't saw, I haven't seen the, uh, well, try well, to stay off social media as much well, as I can. Let, but, me give, let me give you a quick example. I had two guests on my show this week, one from the college world, one from the NFL draft world. The NFL draft world said no brainer top 10. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the answer. Right. The college guy said, respected guy said, I think he's more of a project. It'll take at least two to three years. Well, whoever that is, don't know what they're talking about. Okay, <laughs> okay. I, I don't know who you're talking about. Yeah, and I don't care how well respected they are. They they don't they don't have a clue what they're talking about. I I think what's happening is like people watch games. That's all they watch. They they don't have access to all twenty two. They don't have access to the actual play call. They don't know what the assignments were. They don't know any of that stuff. They don't know the read progressions. I, I hear this all the time. Like. Oh, he missed this read. What? It wasn't a read. <laughs> it literally like wasn't a read. What he should have he should have pulled this and run this. It was a called give, right? And so when you say things like that, and then you double down on it, you're you're really kind of showing more your ignorance than anything else because you don't know what the play design was, mm -hmm. right? And and so I think at the NFL level, obviously those guys do like they have access to all that kind of stuff. They talk to the college coaches. They've been scouting him forever right and so when you when you start to learn that stuff it's like okay <laughs> he's pretty dang good D did he miss short throws yes and that's been you know our focus and that was more of a mechanical thing and and i won't get into to what that's been fixed i'll put it that way if you go out and you watch one of his sessions now every ball right in the face we've had you have had some NFL draft, I guess, websites or somebody in your building because I've seen video. No, they just scrape it from us. Oh, is that what they do? Yeah, the only people we've had in is NFL films. Okay. Yeah, yeah so they were just scraping it so from you, us. But you are aware that there is video of Anthony yeah, yeah, circulating yeah, yeah. online. Yeah, and, and here, here's here's the other thing about, about this whole thing is I know what I see, but then we've had NFL receivers and other NFL quarterbacks start to file in now, right? And they'll run some routes or catch some balls. And they're, they're not full speed. They're still kind of down. But to a man, every single one of them, never seen anything like this. Wow. Never seen a ball come out of his hands like this. We, we had to go and chase Garrett Scantling and say, hey, yo, can you come out and run? Because <laughs> we were having very fast guys having to start five or ten yards past the line of scrimmage and still not figuring out. We still don't know what Anthony's arm capability is. Um, I mean, he would have to sit back there forever to even find that out. But, you know, 70 is not a problem. 75 hadn't been a problem for him. 70 on the move hasn't been a problem for him. And then now he's just accurate on all the little stuff. So I don't know what's going to happen. And I really don't. I, and I mean this, like if we don't go number one, that's the competitive side of me, right? Like I, forget the team. I want to go number one because that you win. Like you win at number one, it, this process anyway. Outside of that, I, I don't really care what anybody thinks and i really don't care outside of our our people and i really don't care where he goes it's we're we're working he's drafted i moved there we're not doing all of this just to be a success we're doing this to win super bowls mm -hmm. like that's the goal the goal is not oh let's prove people wrong no 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 we're we're doing this to win super bowls well and because you just mentioned and you told me this months ago where anthony richardson gets drafted whatever city he gets drafted to you're packing your bags and you're going there for a couple of months to yep. work with him before training camp. I mean, that's it's pretty awesome, right? I mean, that's, yeah, that's yeah, very yeah. cool for you as well, I'm sure. No, it's awesome. I mean, we have, you know, we have guys that we're focused on this year, um, really focused in, in on, and he's one of them. I mean, him, Gardner Minshew, like guys who is a big year, Carson Beck, like uh, uh, Austin Reed, big year guys. Mm -hmm. uh, so like uh, Gardner comes in and I get back from the combine and we start here in Jacksonville. So, uh, yeah, once he once that draft ends, I'm Anthony, Gardner, Carson, like wherever they're at, I'm at for probably the next five or six months. We got a lot of Gator stuff to get into. Final thought on Anthony. A lot of pressure on a young man, a lot of media. Like you said, he's going to be bombarded at the combine next week. You guys work on the on-the-field stuff, the mechanics, the throwing. Do you work on the media stuff, the interview stuff? Because he's going to get a lot thrown at him next week. Nonstop. Yeah. Every day. Every single day. That's easy with him, though. He, he's so intelligent. He's so smart. Um, 
that that's simple. And I mean, y'all saw his Florida press conference. Right. All right. The kid never backs down from anything. He takes responsibilities. He gives he, honest answers. He, man. Well, he's just an honest kid. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. Like, it, you know, the, what people don't realize and they or they forget about Anthony is he's 20 years old. He doesn't turn 21 until May. Wow. You know, and, and it's like, and by the way, you know. So he can't even go out and celebrate with a beer when he no, gets drafted. No, we were talking about yeah. that. Like after the combine, you know, we, we're going to go out. <laughs> yeah. And, and I don't know what you're going to do. They'll have a soda. You guys will, you know. Right, right. So, I mean, but that you see him and you think grown man, but he's 20. Mm-hmm. He didn't turn 21 until May. And and by the way, the most exciting thing about all this is is the one thing I have seen is everybody's taking his measurements from Florida. You're gonna be shocked when he's at the combine. When they go height, weight, hand size, everybody's gonna go, "What in the world?" We still don't have word as to what quarterbacks are gonna do what. Conventional thinking is he's doing it all. Oh, he is gonna do it Absolutely. all. Absolutely. Okay. We're hey, we're we're going to compete. Okay. So yeah. we're not gonna bench. There's no reason for that. Right. I don't. I don't and I don't know like. I don't think he's doing eldro. I don't know. That's Tom's department. That's Torque's department. But uh, no, we're going to compete. But I mean, have you heard Bryce Young, C.J. Stroud, I, Will Levis? I've heard. Any, I don't know anything about any of them. Okay, because yeah, we don't know. Normally, those guys don't throw. Yeah, Anthony's th- Anthony's throwing. Wow. Well, there you go. You heard it here. Anthony's throwing next week at the combine. Today's uh, Gator Bites podcast is brought to you by Southeast Orthopedic Specialist for the highest quality care. You can rely on Southeast Orthopedic Specialist for any orthopedic injury or concern. You can log on to their website by going to se-ortho.com and you can listen for Southeast Orthopedic Specialist, the good doctor, Kevin Murphy, on Thursday mornings in the 7 o'clock hour with Jeff and Dan right here on 1010XL for his weekly analysis of injuries in sports. That was the more enjoyable part of the Gator Bites podcast, talking about Anthony Richardson. Now let's get into what on earth is going on with the guys still in Gainesville. Uh, Patrick Tony is no longer in Gainesville. The tight end coach is no longer in Gainesville. And as of this morning, wide receiver coach Kerry Colbert is no longer in Gainesville. Denny Thompson, you know these guys, obviously, from your work with Anthony. Um, they've lost three assistants in 24 hours. Is the sky falling? I mean, what is what is going on there? I don't think it's falling. I think there's some adjustments that need to be made to the calendar, like the overall football calendar, just in general. Um, the NFL is it kind of runs everything, right? Like everybody kind of follows the NFL's lead, and the Super Bowl just ended, right? And yeah. you got signing day before the Super Bowl, which is weird. And it, it, so I, I think a lot of the NFL stuff couldn't happen before. Does that make sense? Like, well, I mean, Arizona Gannon just got that job a week ago. Right. So it's 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 almost like, okay, you're almost setting these kids up for failure um, when you have signing day when you have it, but these coaches don't know what's available to them for three more weeks. And so I think what's happening is you're seeing a shift not just at Florida but in college football. Guys don't want to coach in college football that much. It, the recruiting is not fun. It's year-round. It's exhausting. Um, it's weird. It's weird to chase 17 year olds across the country. It's weird to play video games with them. It's like the whole thing is just weird. Right. And so I think at some point, you know, you look at this and you go, okay, quality of life in the NFL is pretty dang good. I don't have to recruit. Yeah. I got to scout, but those guys get a lot of time off in the off season. We don't get any. And so I think the natural progression is going to be, if you are a good positional college coach, you're going to get a chance on Sundays because that's more about coaching and And that's more about recruiting over here in college. So I think that's going to happen. It is concerning that there's an exodus after one year. Like, I'd be lying if I didn't say that. Um, I I don't feel any, I don't even feel like a small sliver of hope for next year if I'm as a Florida fan. Right. I just hope the only hope that I I think we can have is is you you look kind of, you hope to take kind of the FSU path of, have you a good recruiting year? Really recruit the portal next year, and and know going in, hey, let, if we win seven games next year, that's really good. But that next year, we should be golden. DJ Lagway, by the way, is legit. Yeah, I had him on Hacker After Dark uh, a couple he, he of weeks was in, ago. He was in a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I, he didn't throw. He just came in, just kind of looking at the setup. He was going to Florida, spent the day with us. What a great guy! Mm. A great head on his shoulders. Dad is like one of my favorite guys I've ever spent time with. We went to dinner with him and and ultra talented. So I think, you know, the Rashada situation probably played out the way that long term benefits Florida. 
Um, now you get DJ in there, you know, in a couple in a year and a half, and and I think he's a guy that could come in and, and play pretty quickly. We haven't talked since the Rashada situation. I want to get to that in a moment. To Patrick Tony, um, mentioned this last night. Had somebody actually had two people in Gainesville tell me that was it entirely the reason that he wanted to leave? No, <clears throat> but let's be honest. Patrick Tony was getting obliterated by the fan base last year after one year. Fire Patrick Tony. Patrick Tony's awful. What is he doing? And and after one year and with a le- large amount of that defense weren't even his guys that he had recruited, you know, that might have worn down a 32-year-old coach. Um oh, I'm sure. I, I I'm I'm sure. I mean, it, it's Gator fans, y'all wore me down this yeah. year. And I don't even work at Florida. Like, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a very high-pressure job. Um, taking that away, I remember the last time we were on this, the one thing that I said was what has to happen this offseason is they have to keep the coordinators intact. Right. Like, that has to happen. Um, you don't – because now you're going back into a new first year. Like, With spring that, football beginning next week. Right. So yeah. no matter what you thought about the coaches, <clears throat> you needed to see what your athletes were when they know the system. And so that's a that's a big setback, and I don't care like if they go hire the best of the best, it, it doesn't matter. It it's it's just a setback, right? And so I don't I don't know if that's the reason he left. Like I said before, I think the case for the NFL from college is a pretty strong case by itself. Well, you know, and I was told, and maybe you know something different, that he was in play at Baylor. He oh, was really? legitimately no, thinking about leaving Florida to go to Baylor, and maybe I have my orange and blue goggles on here. To me, that's a step down, right? To go from Florida to Baylor. So was it just a matter of well, I, he wanted out of Gainesville? Yeah, but uh, the one thing, I, I, as I've gotten to know these guys better, and even, even as I've kind of evolved in this world, you can't beat quality of life. Like it, that, The money is the money. The money's so high now that guys are starting to go, how much money do I really need? Like, where is a good place for me to raise my family? Mm-hmm. Where is a good place for my quality of life, my sanity? And I don't know. I think probably every college town has this, but it's probably not the place that you're getting constant DMs and, hey, fire this guy, because your kids see that. Yeah. Right? Like, it's that's probably not the best place. We saw it with Mike White, the basketball but, coach, last year. Right. Same but thing. I will say this. They chose this life. They put their family in this. You deal with it. Right. I, I mean, that's that's the way that I react when I get DMs and I don't get them. But like, like I chose this. And outside of that, like my life is amazing. I wouldn't trade my life with anybody in the world. And I'm sure Patrick Tony would say the same thing. So both things can be true. Right. Like I understand or he would understand. Like I'm in a public I'm talking about Patrick in a public setting here that's going to get criticism and all that kind of stuff. Um, but there's still that quality of life aspect to it. And I think that's I think that's fair and wise on their part. All right. So. Billy Napier has been there one year, six and seven, obviously not good, not what people wanted, but you look at some of the best players on the Gator roster last year, not named Anthony Richardson, Ricky Pearsall, Cyrus Torrance, Trevor Etienne, Montreal Johnson were all Billy Napier guys, came in because of Billy Napier, did a decent job recruiting, he was brought in to be a better recruiter than Dan Mullen, he did get a signed letter of intent from a five-star quarterback in Jaden Rashada. He's also got another commitment from a five-star quarterback in 2024 in DJ Lagway. That's two top 10 national quarterbacks in back-to-back years. The Rashada thing did not end like everybody wanted it to end. There are different reasons and stories that you hear. I don't blame Napier, though, for the Rashada situation. No. It's unfortunate that that's really going to cost Florida come this season because they got serious problems at quarterback. We'll talk about Graham Mertz and Jack Miller in a moment. But Gator fans that are going to blame Napier, I don't think that's right, because he got the letter of intent. Whether Rashada's camp wanted more after the fact, whether they were promised things they didn't get from the NIL, whatever happened, I don't fault Billy Napier for that not working out. I don't either. I, and I don't know the details of that situation, but I know enough to know that it 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 seems sketchy on 
everybody's in. I've there's heard like yeah, I've heard three or four different things. I have two, and 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 all three or four are kind of the same thing to me anyway. It's like uh, like people were kind of operating. And and I'm I'm talking to everybody, not the kid, not the dad. Right. Not it's Miami, a, it's not a terrible Florida. look for everybody. It's just kind of like that's the it's nil's new. Nil is not supposed to be used in recruiting. It obviously is being used in recruiting. You're going to have these mistakes. Like kids aren't worth thirteen million dollars. No, it, it it's not. So it, I I don't know where. The, but to your point, hack. That's impressive. When you go land two five star guys, um, that's really impressive. And I think that Napier puts a huge emphasis on recruiting, and I think he will have good recruiting classes. Once they clean up what's going on in the field, and that's why I hate that they're losing coordinators, once they get an idea of their personnel, how they respond to things, how they best receive information, because they're still learning all that, right? Um, now what does the product look like on the field? And then at that point, you got to have the Jimmys and Joes to match, and he's getting the Jimmys and Joes. Um, now we got to... All right, where are the coaches? What is this product? What are we trying to run? What are we trying to do? What's the identity? You know, and, and you just said it. I mean, when you look at the running backs and when you look at kind of the quarterback situation, I think it's pretty obvious the identity is going to be running the football. You got to run the football. You got to. And look, you and I haven't talked since Graham Mertz. Um, honestly, I've not heard a lot of positive things. I'm it, we're going to be very curious during the spring to get a better look at Graham Mertz. It appears to be his job. I don't think there'll be a competition with Jack Miller, uh, but I've heard, and nothing against Austin Appleby, and I hate using this comparison. He's a friend of the program. I've had him on a bunch. He's now a coach. I mean, Austin Appleby's a good mind in the game of football, but he's a guy that came from the Big Ten, right, from Purdue. Graham Mertz came from the Big Ten from Wisconsin, and there seems to be a correlation that Graham Mertz is going to be the second coming of Austin Appleby. Would you agree with that assessment? On the surface, maybe. Uh, but I'll, I'll say this, I know who Florida had ranked below Graham Mertz. So they think really highly of him. Mm -hmm. Really. So these guys are getting paid to win football games. So I am going to say, <clears throat> I don't know as much about Graham Mertz as Ryan O'Hare and Billy Napier. Right. So there's something about Graham Mertz they saw that put him at the top of that list. Because when you look at who they hosted for visits and all that kind of stuff, I think he was it, right? And and I had conversations with them about guys that I had, and it was, I, we really like Graham, right? So I, I don't, I'll, I'll defer to them on that, but I, I will say this. It looks to me like the direction they want to head in this whole thing is the identity is physical running, right? And we need a quarterback that gets us in and out and can make occasional plays, right? And, and they, I think did, Graham, they, they did well on the offensive line version of right, the transfer portal. Right, and that, so I, I think like it, that's the look. When I say there's no hope on my end, I, I say that as a Florida fan, as a typical Florida fan that wants to win 10 games. That's not going to happen. No. But I do think that there's going there. The credit I will give them is this looks very similar to what Georgia, the way Georgia built is if you go back in time, and it took Georgia a little bit to, to – I mean, they won a bunch of games, but it took them a little bit to get over that big hump. But if you go back over time, what they made their identity about at the very beginning was the front seven on both sides. We're going to beat you with those guys, and then whatever we have behind it, we have, mm -hmm. right? That looks like what Napier's trying to do. Now, it, can he execute it to the level that Kirby has? That's the question. Nobody else can. Um, it's kind of like what Saban did at Alabama. It's the exact same thing. I mean, John Parker Wilson, Brody Croyle, McElroy, you know. And and you watched every game, and it was like, God, I hope they throw it, because if they hand it off, they're going to get six yards. Right. And and I think that's what the Florida identity is going to become and what Napier – Napier is a very traditional guy. Extremely – he may be young, but he is an extremely traditional guy. And, and so I, I think that's probably the route that they probably want to go. And and it, once they get their guy in there at quarterback, I think that they recruit, that they groom, that they teach the offense to, that has been committed to them for a little bit, so he comes in ready. I think at that point, then we can make a fair assessment on the staff and on Napier and, and, and all that kind of stuff. Today's Gator Bites podcast is brought to you by Southeast Orthopedic Specialist and Northeast Florida's leading orthopedic center, providing an unparalleled level of care across numerous locations in both Jacksonville and St. Augustine. That includes Riverside, Northside, the Southside, the beaches, Fleming Island, and St. John's. Denny, as we begin to wrap up, 
you mentioned the word hope. You talk to a lot of Gator fans. I talk to a lot of Gator fans. They don't see a lot of hope. And that schedule is brutal. I think you said it earlier. If you told me seven and five in 2023, I would say, where do I sign? Yeah. That's my expectation. And I think that would almost be a good year. When you talk about Utah, LSU, Georgia, um, Florida State, they're going to be huge underdogs Mm -hmm. in those games. Your toss-up games are the South Carolinas, the Missouris, and the Arkansas. To me, there's only Tennessee. There's only Kentucky. Yeah. There's only three games that you're going to win. You're going to beat McNeese State. You're going to beat Charlotte, and you're going to beat Vandy. I know Vandy beat you last year, but come on, Vandy comes to Gainesville. Aside from those three, well, those are the. Let's rephrase that. Those are the three games that you will be favored in. Yes. If if they if they had the lines out now, maybe they do. I don't know. Those are the three you know they'll be favored in. There's four or five you know that they're going to, or there's three or four that's huge underdogs, and the rest they're probably either pickums or they're underdogs. Mm-hmm. That's the reality of the situation. Is there a competition between Jack Miller and Graham Mertz in your opinion, or is it Graham Mertz's job? Nah, I think it's Graham. Yeah, I think it's Graham. I have had no conversations, but I, I, I think I don't think that Graham Mertz comes to Florida. I do. Okay. I don't know anything, but <laughs> this will be good. Yeah, I do think there's a little bit of not a competition with Jack, but a competition with being the guy in the spring for Graham Mertz. What does that look like? Because they could always go back and get another guy. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a flood of transfer portal quarterbacks in April. Yes, but those guys are the guys that lost jobs elsewhere. Yeah. Does it matter? Well, if they're better than the guy you have, if well, that that would be bad. If if the guys that lost no, jobs no, elsewhere, absolutely not. It's not. No, 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 no. no. Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow lost a job, transferred to LSU. Right. No, you can roll your eyes, but the list goes on and on and on and on. I mean, for every Joe, Justin Fields, for every Joe Burrow and Justin Fields, there's 20 guys that uh, transferred sure. and sure, but you don't. If that if. And I, I don't even know a name to to blo- to, to throw out. I've heard there. there's an Ohio State guy that might. There's a battle there at Ohio State, and whoever loses like, that Ole one, Miss. Yeah. Ole Miss has like an amazing quarterback room. Whoever loses that job is a really good player. Mm-hmm. Like, so are you going to go? Well, he lost that job. Well, so Florida already know. missed out on two of those guys in my, the first port. My point being is, if Graham Mertz falters in the spring, they have that option. Yeah, they have that option to go. Okay, let's look at the portal. There's going to be some really good players in this portal. Well, I think they're going to add somebody in the portal regardless of how Mertz does. Don't you? Uh, I think they they should. Um, they only got three scholarship guys in that quarterback room right now, which is crazy when Max, you think about it. You take counting Max, Max Brown, Max, Jack, and yeah, and Graham. Yeah, yeah. I guess. I, and they didn't. They're not bringing anybody. Um, so yeah, yeah. I guess you're right. I guess they do need to. But I think they do have that fallback. I think they do. I mean, I, listen, if, if, and, and again, I don't even know. I've, I am so stupid at this because we have been just in a bubble for the last two months that I don't even know where everybody went. But I know there's some, there's some good players competing against each other at a, in a lot of situations right now. Mm-hmm. And once spring gets done, like what, th- there's going to be some guys available. Uh, as we wrap up, we would be remiss if we didn't at least mention. Colin Castleton and the career he had at the University of Florida, broken hand season more than likely over, which means his career at the University of Florida is over. Three years in Gainesville, third all time in block shots. Here's a guy that averaged one point a game his last year at Michigan. One point a game. He comes into Florida and in three years becomes maybe the biggest big man they've had since Patrick Young and probably a top five big man they've had going back to the days of Horford and Noah. So you go back about 15 years. You work with a bunch of athletes. Terrible that his Florida career comes to an end with an injury, but still a tip of the cap to a guy who used the transfer portal to his advantage, wasn't playing in Michigan, came down to Florida, and made a big impact for almost three seasons. Yeah, change of scenery, man. There's That's real. That's real. It, it's not always another staff's fault. It, it's just finding a place that you're comfortable in, you're developed at, and you can flourish. And if you, and if you get that wrong the first time, the transfer portal allows you to correct that mistake from a decision you made when you were 17 or 18 years mm-hmm. old. And that's not a bad thing. It's kind of like what we're talking about with the backup quarterbacks, right? 
Like, if you get into a system in basketball or you get in, into something that a rotation or something like that, it's just like, this doesn't feel right. And obvious when he came to Florida, it felt right, right? Yeah. And he performed better. So it does suck. It sucks for him. I think, you know, he's not done playing basketball. No, 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 no. You know, so, I, I mean, he's got that that hanging out. But these guys train for March. These guys want to be playing um, right now. So that, that stinks to to have it all in that quickly. Leave us with this. Uh, again, itinerary, you, Anthony, your team, you leave Tuesday for Indianapolis. You're up there all week. You said earlier, Anthony will be doing all the throwing drills on Saturday night. He's going to get a ton of attention. Uh, what's your itinerary? We know what Anthony's is, but you as Anthony's coach, what's your duties, your role up there in Indianapolis next week? Uh, really, where I'm at, with we have a you know this whole team, we all have certain – um, responsibilities. And so when we get to Indy, that's mostly falls with Torque and Tom. Um, and so it, my, really what I go to Indy for is I'm there for, for Ant and we'll, we'll throw during the week just to keep him going, stuff like that. But the reality, I just got back from the Super Bowl. The reality is there's only two times a year in our business that everybody's at the same place. Mm -hmm. And that's one of them. So we'll get more business stuff done in four days than we'll get in the next 360. Yeah, it's amazing what the combine has become regarding yeah. that sort of no, thing. It, I mean, my schedule is just jam packed with agents or or coaches or whatever, just dinner stuff like that. Well, teams again, I don't know how much, and that's not about Anthony. It, it, right. I, I want to be crystal clear about that. Th this is just we're running a business and we're intertwined in the NFL right now and so it's 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 a good opportunity for us just to catch up with with people we've been talking to throughout the year and 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 get plans going forward when I imagine I mean we could do this for 30 more minutes so yeah. this will be the last question um again I don't know how much of this you can necessarily get into but whether it's Anthony or whomever you've gotten a lot of guys that have gotten drafted Brock Purdy last year when you're an indie I mean teams will I'm assuming talk to you right about yeah, your yeah. guys yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not breaking any no, news no no, no 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 I mean I get I've got a lot of friends in the NFL now. It's cool. And so, I, I, you know, a phone call will happen, and then at the end of it, say, hey, man, how's Ant look? And it, it's about as basic as, as that. They've got all the film. They're getting ready to see him. They're getting ready to test him. They're get, they, they know, like, all of that's getting ready to happen. There's no hurry for that, right? All the decisions will be made between, you know, next Sunday and whatever the draft is in April. He's got a pro day ahead of him. A lot of people have pro days ahead of him. And so, I, yeah, it's not, a, it's not as much as you would think. There's nobody deep diving into this. Right. It's just, hey. You're not man, having dinner with Jim Ursay. No, on no, Wednesday. no, God, no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. It, it, it really is like a, that's a big difference in college and pro. In college, it is constant. Tell me this, tell me this, tell me this, tell me this. And your relationships are based on that. It, the NFL is not like that because there's a draft and they have access to so much data. So they're going to make the best decision they can make. When we talk about busts and we talk about, well, why would you ever draw, drive, draft this guy? There's a list of reasons, mm -hmm. right, that they're not just going, oh, I got a feeling on this guy, right? There is, it is a process. There's a science to it. Um, and and we are just kind of a, we train and there's there's data that we get that, you know, maybe we share. Um, that's That's the extent of it. That is Denny Thompson. I'm the hacker, Ryan Green. Denny, safe travels. Yes, sir. To Indianapolis. We'll try to do this one or two more times before the NFL draft in April. Thank you for watching and listening to Gator Bites, 1010XL.com and the Florida Gator 1010XL Facebook page.